Okay, this is just um, a snippet of the input output storage section. Um, I'm going to skip over some things because you should know what a mouse and a keyboard is. That's a mouse, the keyboard's the thing that you sat in front of that you can type on. If you don't know that, um, I can't help you. Um, so, an input device allows you to get data into a computer. An output device displays data that is on the computer. Um, so it's a way of getting data out of the computer essentially. Uh, and storage is a way of saving data. Um, two things that get confused. Backing storage is not a backup. A backup is a copy of the data in case the original is lost or um, corrupt. But backing storage is where you save your documents. So a hard drive, a memory stick, something like that. So a few of the devices then that um, get confused. A TFT monitor is what you now see as all monitors. Um, it's a flat screen. It stands for thin film transistor or totally flat thing, whatever helps you remember that this is a TFT. I think this is still there. Um, essentially some organisations perhaps are still using these. It stands for cathode ray tube or crap retro technology, depends. Uh, again, what's going to help you remember that. So, if you see MICR or magnetic ink character recognition, it's these numbers along the bottom of a check. They, well, these ones, sorry, just the first ones. Um, it uses magnetic ink, and then when it's read with an, an MICR reader, it knows what these letters or numbers are because it has um, magnets in it and it can read what these numbers um, are on the paper. So, an OMR is optical mark recognition. This is often seen in not registers these days, so you perhaps can't even remember registers that were like this. Um, but lottery tickets, you circle or colour in squares or circles and uh, to identify what numbers you've chosen or what answers you've chosen in a multiple choice test and then it's read through an OMR reader and it knows the position of all these and therefore can read what you've selected. An OCR is an optical character reader or optical character recognition. They don't normally put a picture of this in because it, it just looks like a normal scanner um, and you'll see one of those in a second. Um, but it, if you had a page of typed up text and you needed it on the computer but you didn't have an electronic copy you could scan it in and it would turn it into text so you could put it into a word processor and edit the text that's on there. Um, a barcode reader that's what one of those looks like it reads barcode you don't need to know how it works at this stage you just need to know what one looks like they're used in shops to track stock and sales. Magnetic strip um, on the back of a credit card um, you have a black strip or on a debit card it's magnetic, it contains your information. They're not used as often these days in terms of credit cards, but yeah, again, you'll see them um, if you go into restaurants or bars or anything like that and the waiter or the waitress is swiping things on the till. Um, it's normally a magnetic uh, strip card. You tend to see this more often now, which is um, a chip. So we use chip and pin. Um, it contains all the information about you and your bank details and it also has your pin makes it a little bit more secure. So different types of printers if you see a boxy looking one as a picture it's normally representing a laser printer they're quiet they print out a lot per minute shall we say um, and they're fairly cheap per page it's quite expensive to buy and the ink's very expensive but actually if you're printing out a lot this is the best one to use so anything in an office or anything like that you want a laser printer an inkjet printer you tend to see at home or in small businesses it's a little bit more noisy than a laser printer it's slower it uses it's cheap to buy they're normally only about 30 pounds to buy but then the ink costs about 50 pounds so if you're going to be printing a lot it tends to get expensive due to the ink costs and finally if you see this one that's got dots up the side this is a dot matrix that's not called a dot matrix because of the dots up the side but if it helps you remember it then go for it so these are very noisy but they do print um, by using sort of a little hammer that hammers onto the page um, so therefore if you had carbon uh, paper so you had I think they call it multiple copies in the exam um, it means that you can print onto two pieces of paper at the same time essentially so usually in things like uh, mechanics or garages and the garage will keep one piece of paper and you keep the other one as a receipt if you see this one that looks like it's got wallpaper coming out of it um, this is a graph plotter um, it's used for large technical drawings, so blueprints, used by architects for big printouts. 
Um, these are two different pictures that the exam board have used before for a DVD or a CD drive. They don't make you decide which one it is between the two. This is obviously, if you were to press eject on a laptop, this would be the tray that comes out, I think is what they're trying to represent here. And this is one that you would uh, install, put into a, a desktop computer. So if you see this one that looks like it's got a scalpel on it, um, it's representing a hard drive or a disk drive or a magnetic disk, they're all the same thing. Um, and this arm moves across and it reads um, the data that's on these metal disks, um, which is magnetic it's hard because it's metal so that's what you need to be saying if you see that picture this is a trackable um, the old mice that you used to use perhaps had a ball in the bottom of them if you turned it upside down and moved that ball around the mouse would move that's essentially what this is it's good for people that have got limited movement um, in their arms so people with disabilities um, or people that need really accurate mouse will perhaps use a trackable I've seen this come up before and people have said that this is a touchpad or a graphics tablet. I can see where you're coming from. If this was very small and handheld, it could look like a PDA perhaps. It's not, it's a scanner. So if you think this is sort of an A4 piece of paper size, you put it on there, you close the lid, scan it in. You normally perhaps see them on top of a printer because they tend to come together now, but this is just a scanner. So a new one um, for this year. So this is a RFID tag. Um, it uses, uh, it's wireless, it uses electromagnetic field to transfer data. Um, so if you've got an RFID tag on you, you could essentially walk through a door and it would know that you've walked through that door. Possible uses in the future, so it could be on all products in a shop, put it in a trolley that has a scanner on it, you just then leave the shop. It's got all your details already and it takes it out of your bank account as you leave the shop. So um, RFID is something that you'll be seeing more and more of in the next few years. Okay, so different types of memory then now. Um, RAM. This stands for Random Access Memory. Um, it's a temporary store of data. It holds the data that's currently being used by the user, and it's volatile. So volatile means that when the computer's turned off, the data just disappears. So if you're writing something out in a Word document and your computer switches off, uh, if we forget the autosave feature, then you would lose what you've written because it was just stored in RAM. When you press save, it then goes to the back in storage, which is probably your hard drive. Um, so to remember this, RAM, type of goat, volatile, a little bit unpredictable, a little bit crazy. So if you think of a crazy little goat, you'll remember that RAM is volatile. The data in RAM can be changed and we need it so that it can store what you're currently working on. So the other type of memory is ROM. This is read-only memory. It's non-volatile, um, so it doesn't forget when you turn the computer off what was stored in it. And it stores the BIOS, which is um, a, a bit of programming that tells your computer how to start up to open up the operating system, check that there's a mouse and keyboard installed. Um, so it's the black screen with the numbers whizzing around that you see when your computer starts up. Also, it stores programs in washing machines. So if you set it to set in C, that's a hundred degree thousand RPM spin for an hour. That's always going to be that. It's not going to change. Um, same with instructions for um, games, so on your Xbox and things like that. You can't change the data. It's used to store programs and coding that are permanent and cannot be changed. Okay, so off from input-output a little bit, but um, operating systems, um, this can be categorized as um, two different types. The first one is a graphical user interface, or a GUI. It has um, what we call WIMP, so Windows, Icons, Menus, and Pointers. Um, it takes up a lot of memory because it's very graphical. Um, however, it's very intuitive to use. My nan can use a computer because of a GUI. You press Start you click on all programs, you open up internet, it's quite easy to do. So the opposite of that is a command line interface which is um, using typed commands to control the computer. It doesn't take up much memory or processing power but it can be hard to use as you've got to learn the commands but it then can be quicker if you know what the commands are. Okay so this one um, it's a risk to use this however it has seen to be a pattern. Now, it, not to say it's going to continue or that you should trust it entirely, but if you're struggling, it's always worth knowing. So we know that a remote control operates a television. Now, the pattern that the exam board have used in all bar about two questions that I've ever found is this next one down will be the next one down over here. Keyboard is entering text. Touch screen is this one. So what I would suggest that you do is do the ones that you know and see if it's following this pattern. And if you're really stuck, go with it. You might pick up some easy marks. So for this one, we know that word processing is used to write a letter to parents, so therefore measuring will be monitoring, 
the search engine. Um, uh, sorry, presentation software will be produced in a multimedia slideshow. Then search engine will be the next one at the top, and database will be the next one down. Again, if you know two of them and it's following this pattern, go with it. Okay, so optical storage. Um, optical means that it is read by using a laser. It's on a disc. So the types of discs that you have are CD. This tends to have either software on it or music or transferring files between computers. You've got DVD, which is used for standard definition films or games or software. And finally, you've got Blu-ray, which is used for high definition films. Another new one is the cloud. Okay, now the cloud is just storage that's used across the internet. Um, it's stored on somebody's server. So if you've got um, the iCloud, then it'll be stored on Apple servers, all your files. If you've got um, Google Drive, obviously it's stored on Google servers. The advantage of this is things can be backed up automatically, and it's also um, a way of storing information and then logging onto a different computer and still seeing the same information because you're connected to the internet. And your internet needs to be fairly high speed to make this useful on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but it is a good backup because it's not saved where your computer is so if your god forbid house burns down you've not lost all your data okay um, because it'll be stored elsewhere or if you drop your phone down the toilet you've not lost all your pictures because they're backed up to iCloud okay so that's a quick introduction to the more obscure input and output devices again there are lots on there that I haven't mentioned but you should know what they are by now